Hopefully you've all come across the Dream Tender, a nice, tidy, well-organized set of documents that clearly and concisely explains what you, as a bidder, need to do in order to prepare a response. But sometimes, and I'm sure you'll face this eventually, you come across a real mess of a tender, where the buyer clearly doesn't know what they're doing and decides to throw as much information at you as possible, hoping you'll figure it out. I'm Sean from Frameworker, and this is six steps to navigating nightmare tenders. We start off with the ideal standard for tenders. Here, you'll likely see three main documents. The contract, the tender instructions, and the specification. Some tenders may have extra appendices, but this is the trinity of documents that any good tender needs. The contract covers the terms and conditions, things like payment terms, liabilities, what breach of contract looks like, etc. The tender instructions is exactly that. It's the rules you must follow, summarizing what the tender will ask you to do and how you will be scored. And the specification, or statement of requirements, provides you with the detail of what you will need to do for the buyer. It's essentially a list of duties that you will be required to perform during the contract. However, your nightmare tender, for some reason, has 14 separate documents and presented in no particular order. The buyer has thrown in things like a KPI framework, historical performance data spreadsheet, their delivery standards, their code of conduct, their tender document, instructions on how to use their procurement portal, a general specification, a tender submission pro forma, a set of definitions, their template schedule of rates, a technical specification, and a few others for good measure. So where do you begin? Step one, organize your documents. Try and think of the gold standard, those three documents, the contract, the instructions, and the specification. Make three folders with these headings and a fourth called appendices. Now start moving the tender documents into the relevant folders. Step two, read the instructions. Now that the documents are a little bit more manageable, have a look in the instructions folder and read through the documents in there. This should give you an idea of how the tender will be scored and what criteria they will use. Don't forget to take note of the deadline and method for submission. You don't want to miss this date or get this wrong. Step three, summarize the criteria. Take note of the criteria by making a handy spreadsheet, listing roughly what each quality question asks, any word limits, and its weighting. Step four, make a checklist of the submission requirements. Again, from the instructions, you should have an idea of what documents and in what format the buyer wants from you. Make a list so that you can work through this at the end of the tender before you submit. Sometimes buyers will produce this for you, but the nightmare tender probably won't. Step five, make yourself a response folder. Here you can start to create blank documents covering each of the criteria. This allows you to draft each response individually. Some tenders have a pro forma or template that they want you to fill in. Not to worry, you can always copy and paste your response into this template at the end. Trust me, having it separated makes the whole process a lot more manageable. If there are any pass-fail criteria, certificates that need signing, etc., all of these can be copied and pasted into your response folder as well, just so you don't forget them. And step six, split the specification up. Open up all of your blank response documents that you've made and run through the specification document or documents line by line copying and pasting chunks of this into the corresponding blank response document. For a question asking about performance monitoring, paste in all the stuff from the specification about KPI monitoring, reporting requirements and performance standards. When the specification talks about staffing requirements, copy and paste this into the question about how you intend to manage the contract. You're basically trying to match parts of the specification to the quality questions and make sure your responses to each covers the main requirements of the tender. You may also want to have a glance at the appendices folder to see if anything there can be added. And that's it. You now know how the tender's being run and when it's due, and you've got the specification split up into separate documents, each relating to a specific quality question. Now comes the hard part, writing a response for each question that ticks off the requirements and answers the questions within the word limits. 
We love producing this content and supporting local businesses access public sector contracts, but we do need your support to do this. Please consider following us on Twitter at Frameworker3. Congratulations to Daniel Follows for winning our social value giveaway for a free one hour Skype consultation. I message you to arrange a date. And for more free resources on tendering and procurement in the UK public sector, check out our website at www.frameworker.co.uk.